Kia ora, I'm NIWA climate scientist Petra Pearce. NIWA was commissioned to produce a climate change assessment report to assist Greater Wellington Regional Council with their planning and decision making processes. This video summarises some of the main points of that report. Wellington Region has warmed by about one degree over the past hundred years or so and this trend is set to continue. By 2040, annual mean temperature of the area is expected to increase by up to one degree. By 2090, in the Waira Rapa, it is expected to be up to 3 degrees warmer and for Wellington City up to 2.5 degrees warmer than at the end of the 20th century. With increases in mean temperatures, extreme warm temperatures will also increase. Parts of the Waira Rapa currently experience around 30 hot days per year, but by 2090 up to 60 more hot days are expected. Wellington City currently experiences about 7 hot days per year, and this is expected to increase to 40 hot days per year by 2090. These changes are significant and will have huge impacts on human health, power consumption and farm stock. And the magnitude of these changes is dependent on how fast greenhouse gases increase in the atmosphere. Looking at rainfall, there are a wide range of model results, but on average annual rainfall may increase or decrease by less than 5% across the Wellington region by 2040. By 2090, the Waira Rapa is projected to experience up to 10% less rainfall per year and the West Coast may receive up to 10% more rainfall per year. In terms of extreme rainfall events, they are likely to be more extreme and more common. A warmer atmosphere can hold more moisture, about 8% more for every degree of warming. In the coastal Wellington region, a rain event which currently happens about once a year is projected to increase by up to 25% in magnitude. So, say a storm that brings 100 millimetres of rain now would bring 125 millimetres of rain in the future. This has implications for flooding and water management. On the other side, drought is also expected to become more common in eastern parts of the Wellington region. Potential evapotranspiration deficit is one way to measure drought and is projected to increase for much of the Wairarapa by the end of the 21st century. An increase in drought would have significant ramifications for primary industries in terms of pasture and crop growth and flow on effects for water supply. You can find further detail on the points discussed by downloading the full report. The report contains projections for many more climatic variables which you can see here and also information about sea level rise. Also covered are impacts of climate change on biodiversity, biosecurity, river flows and wildfire. New in this report are high resolution climate change maps which allow the council and stakeholders to identify the areas of greatest likely changes within each main phytoa or catchment areas. It is also important to note that the different scenarios tell us the worst effects may be avoided if global greenhouse gas emissions are significantly reduced in the coming years. The Greater Wellington Regional Council is hoping that this freely available report will motivate discussions between different layers of government and stakeholders to work together to make the region and its local communities more resilient to climate change. Uh, kia ora tato. I'm Chris Laidlaw, Chair of the Greater Wellington Regional Council. We now know that climate change is the biggest environmental challenge that we've ever faced. We know it's going to have a serious impact on our region and Greater Wellington's got a strategy in place to ensure we do everything we can to future-proof our communities and our infrastructure against the, all those big hazards that lie ahead. The reality of climate change is taken into account in every decision taken by the Council. And the information in this NIWA report is key to understanding the magnitude of the changes that are inevitably occurring. The worst impact of climate change can be avoided, but only if communities around the world act to reduce their emissions. Our strategy contains a number of specific actions that will ensure our organisation reduces its own emissions. It will also influence a transition to a low carbon economy right around the region. We will continue to develop this work with communities, councils, with central government and other stakeholder groups to make better decisions about land use and transport in the region and to ensure that we apply an adaptive planning approach to the massive challenges that we are now going to face.